I've emptied out these. I'm a little out of breath. I've been doing all the uh, DIY and whatnot. Um, both of these snakes are out now. And what we're going to do is add some major ventilation here. So I've got some new sexy ass vents. They are going to go on. And the plan of action is I'm going to basically take my hole saw and just kind of like attack it and just try and carve out a massive hole here. I don't have a jigsaw, so we're going with the hole saw and then hopefully it won't look too bad, but it doesn't really matter anyway because uh, the vent's going to be covering it. But if you look here, the cool thing about this vent is that it has fly screen on the back, so it's completely snake proof. Uh, these two guys over here are outside of their vibs now, so I'm going to work quite fast so they don't have to be in these tubs for too long. And this is what happens when you try to use a smaller drill because it's lighter. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, so I had to stop and swap drills because uh, that drill just couldn't handle it. So I've got a big massive drill out. Um, the room's getting very hot because of it. I'm sweating, but look at this. See, now we're talking major ventilation here. It looks really messy, but it's okay because we're not going to see it once um, we've got it covered with vents. So look at all this airflow going straight through here. But also, when we have... Oh, this is very dusty. Um, when we have all the uh, Baskin lights on at full power, hopefully, uh, all that hot air is going to be just released straight out of here. So we should get decent temperatures, um, a lot of radiation, but not necessarily fill the entire view of hot air. So a bit of a different way of controlling temperatures via ventilation, but I'm quite happy with how it's shaping up so far. So now I'm just going to attach this vent uh, one inside, one outside and one inside, sorry, so it doesn't look so ghastly from the inside. But it's going to look quite cool, I think. Just got the one beneath that to do, and then the bearded dragon down here. Um, I'm tempted to do uh, a cool side one over there as well. I think if I do that, then we're going to get massive airflow, and it's going to be great for temperatures. <laughs> Okay, so I've cut up a long 4x2 fence post to put in between vivs as spaces so that heat doesn't transfer up between them like it was before. As you can see here, I've done the same to both the cool end so that cool air is drawn in through here and at the hot end so all the excess hot air from the basking spot can be released. So this is Monty's vivarium after being raised above the bearded dragon with both ventilation. Now the heat bulb stays on and it's nice and cluttered. This is a prime example of how I like to think about habitat complexity. Truth be told, I just chucked loads of cork rounds in and a few branches, and that's just shavings at the bottom. It doesn't have to be a bioactive masterpiece for it to be complex, and most importantly, promote natural behaviours in your snake. So look at this thermometer. This is literally directly under the UV, so it has radiation upon it, which means it's going to be an elevated reading compared to what the actual air temperature really is. So 26 over there is something I'm quite happy about. And if we go to over to the cool side, it says 23 to 24 over there. So I would imagine the air temperature um, is probably closer to the one on the left because that's further away from radiation. So I'm more than happy with this. It's going to allow proper thermoregulation, actually allow some heliothermic behaviour to be expressed because the bulb's not dimmed constantly to being off because of the heat being risen up from beneath. So I'm very, very happy with this. 